Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it, so oh, you- Oh, Jesus, have you guys seen this? Oh, fuck that noise. Yeah, let's get out of here. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, where the hell are you guys going? Mamma Mia. Yeah? You're really going to review Mamma Mia. Yeah, so what? Nobody's gonna watch a fucking review of Mamma Mia. Yeah, the reviews that get the most hits have superheroes, Fart jokes or Nicolas Cage? Yeah, sometimes all in the same video. It isn't just reviewing Mamma Mia. I'm tackling a subject matter that a lot of people don't usually address. Yeah, and what's that? I'm talking about the art of the chick flick. Oh, oh my god, are you kidding me? What are you me? fucking crazy? Hey, hey get oh, back here! Get back here! You're a fucking moron. I can buy and sell you like Abba's dignity! He should have done another Matrix mod. Yeah, some people got so mad they watched that three times. Why do they do that? I don't know. The truth of the matter is, there is kind of an art to the chick flick. Now, I'm not talking about ones that are on the spectrum, like is Hunger Games a chick flick, is Bridesmaids a chick flick. I'm talking about the ones that are ovaries to the wall, estrogen inducing, couldn't be mistaken for anything else, chick flick. The same way an action film like Harry Potter is gender neutral, but Pacific Rim is obviously a dick flick. Which is like a chick flick, only the exact opposite. And that's also not to say men can't like chick flicks or women can't like dick flicks. But let's not kid ourselves, it's not boys who made the Twilight films a hit, and it's not girls who made the Transformers films a hit. Hollywood is always going to market to repetitive demographics. When they find a pattern that keeps repeating, they're going to exploit the fuck out of it. But here's the thing, there's a lot of chick flicks out there that are really good. I don't care if it mostly stars women, a league of their own is fucking hilarious. I don't care if there's a lot of romance and kissing, Princess Bride still kicks fucking ass. As the years go on, we see more and more effort being put into what was originally thought to only be a niche market. Hell, the highest grossing film of all time for a while was a chick flick. And you could argue the highest grossing anime film right now is a chick flick. It's clear a lot more effort is being put into them and more and more audiences are opening up. But here's what really pisses me off. When people try to use it as an excuse, when they watch something that they know is terrible for them and is absolute shit, but they just shrug off, it's okay, it's a chick flick. What the fuck does that matter? Calling a film a gross-out movie doesn't make Rob Schneider's work any better. Calling a film a video game movie doesn't make Super Mario Brothers any better. So why does laziness and insulting writing get a pass here? Well, I don't think it should. Case in point, Mamma Mia. This is one of those chick flicks that not only loves to use that excuse, but likes to fuck things up for other chick flicks that are actually trying to be smart and intelligent. Based on the Broadway show every married man over 40 was dragged to, Mamma Mia is a jukebox musical that, rather than have a variety of artists giving the off chance you might actually like one of them, instead chooses the one your mother listens to when she's drunk at her book club. And don't get me wrong, if you like ABBA, no problem, they've had a lot of big hits and they're very talented. But this is not the movie to showcase any of their abilities. This is an example of trying to take a subgenre, in this case the chick flick, and try to resort it down to a mathematical formula. Like, if you use this combination of elements, you'll end up with a demographic who will fall for it every time. The Bruckheimer films use it, the Happy Madison films use it, and you can bet your ass this fucking film uses it. I know this because I literally found the checklist. Yes, this is from the actual set of the movie. The lazy chick flick checklist to guarantee profitable box office. How many of them do they check off? Well, let's demean women everywhere under the guise of empowering them. This is Mamma Mia. We start off by visually ripping off another chick flick. Can you guess which one? As we see a girl sending off three letters. Sam Carmichael, Bill Anderson, Harry Bright. I just made the assumption this movie's audience can't read, so I thought I'd clarify that. The men get the letters and start making their way towards Greece as we have lazy chick flick check number one, a glittery title. Oh good, this is the cinematic version of those 10 year old stickers you get at grocery stores. <laughs> ah yes, and this brings us to lazy chick flick check number two, squeeing. Actually, I shouldn't say squeeing as much as psychotically howling like sloppily castrated hyenas. I swear, you can play these sounds at the end of a horror trailer. Coming this fall. <laughs> the Squeeing Idiot Massacre. Rated E. So our main character is Sophie, played by Amanda Seyfried, who's about to get married, but also found her mother's diary, which gave not one, not two, but three possibilities to who her mystery father may be. 
I chill in the <laughs> island. He's so sweet and understanding, I couldn't help it. And dot, dot, dot! <laughs> Punctuation is so wild! And here's her mother, played by Meryl Streep trying once in her life not to get an Oscar, as her acting clearly shows always vocally imitating a drunk wicked witch of the West. Well, look at what the tide washed in! Cereal bride and the little hermit over here. <laughs> Where did you get these? Of course not! <laughs> Come on, I never drink and broom at the same time! We discover that Sophie has invited all three of her possible dads to the wedding, which is indicated in lazy chick flick check number three, comic relief speaking in unison. Oh. My. God. Oh, you forgot. Dot, 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 dot. Oh my God. Do they know? Well, what do you write to a total stranger? Please come to my wedding. You might be my father. Jeez, that's almost as crazy as having a musical set in Greece and yet having no Greek star in it. For one Up, oh, we gotta make way for Streep's sisters to come in as we partake in lazy chick flick check number four: ear bleedingly loud secret handshakes. Dynamos. Jesus, you could just call this girl huddle the movie. Come meet my backup girl. Streep owns a hotel where Sophie's fiance has a brilliant idea to attract more people. Yeah, you're not gonna believe this. It's really quite inspired. Put it online. Yeah, I can easily see how any business owner would overlook that tiny step. Tell him about the internet. Uh, he's gonna put me on the line. Online. <laughs> Next you'll be telling me we have the right to vote! No one knows we're here, so if I market it really, really well, then hopefully people will come flooding in. We just want this to be the ultimate romantic destination. Yeah, that makes sense. As apart from all the tons of people we see all the time, nobody would ever know where this place is. And why would they? It's obviously such a low-key, visually uninteresting paradise that I'm sure word would never spread by mouth. I mean, let's face it, nobody ever wants to come across a fucking shithole like this one. Hell, I bet the rent here is so cheap. Cheap enough to support a gigantic hotel that apparently nobody comes to. I'm sorry, what fucking planet are these people on again? My sentiments exactly. Of course, seeing how nobody comes to this little shack, Streep has trouble keeping up with repairs and has to do a lot of it herself. I work all night, I work all day to pay the bills I have to pay. Yeah, just keep in mind, people, Streep is still nine voice essence away from her Into the Woods quality voice, so just try to enjoy her awkward transition period. Look, lonely middle-aged housewives, they have the same fantasies of being rich and full of themselves that you do. God, I always said Tevi as if I were a rich man song would be made so much more powerful if they showed him getting a massage, drinking champagne, and having hot women fan all over him. It just make me feel for him more. So Sophie's dads arrive, played by Piers Brosnan, Colin Firth, and Stellan Skarsgård. Am I saying that right? Do I pronounce the other little O? And is ecstatic to find that she's been thrown into an adventure of choose your own dilf. You are expecting us. Oh my god. Yes. They of course have no idea that she's one of theirs, and Sophie, being a cute, charming dunderhead as opposed to an emotionally unethical fuckface, has no idea what the hell to do with them. No. Come this way. We wouldn't say by any chance happen to be a trouser press on the island with that. But I'm not done being Colin Firth. Now this could be a potentially funny scene. Streep is about to see not one, not two, but three of her ex-boyfriends in front of her without any warning whatsoever. This could be something like that Third Rock from the Sun episode where Don suddenly is confronted by all his past girlfriends. <laughs> Recognize anybody? The reaction could be really funny. Hell, it could be downright hilarious. So, let's see what funny stuff they have up their sleeve. Wow. Fucking amazing. That was practically gift wrap for you. Just about any reaction there would have gotten a huge laugh, and instead, what do you go for? A song that intentionally has nothing funny in it whatsoever. Even the song doesn't really sum up how a person would react after seeing that. It's way too cheerful and upbeat. Which falls into the most tragic and worst of bad chick flick writing. Be funny. But not really. Anyone that knows anything about comedy knows that it's all based on misery. 
there's always an element of something negative in it if you're going to get a laugh. But, for whatever reason, really bad chick flicks think that women can't handle actual misery, so they always follow it up with a lot of giggling. For example, after her upbeat song, she falls right into the middle of all of them. This could be a really funny setup if she freaks out or tries to come up with a clever excuse. There's a lot of various options you could do to make this very humorous. But what does she do? Oh, it's cute. It's adorable. We don't really want to get upset here. We're just having fun. Ha <laughs> ha How is that funny? You have all these humorous setups here and yet you do absolutely nothing with them. Another bad chick flick that did something similar is the Sex and the City movie. They're all checking out this guy. He's really handsome. They think he's hot. But then he goes and kisses another guy. Now, that'd be funny if they looked disappointed or were bummed out, but what do they do? Oh, that's silly, that's fun, we're strong women, so nothing upsets us, therefore absolutely nothing funny can happen to us either. <laughs> we don't want to offend you ladies, because we assume that you kind of had the mindset of toddlers, like if anything remotely threatening happened to you, you get sad and cry and oh no 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 no, so don't worry, no comedy here, nothing funny whatsoever. We've replaced all that really upsetting, funny stuff with a whole bunch of giggling. Because, again, we kind of see you like babies. If you see a lot of women laughing even though you don't know shit about them, maybe you'll start laughing too. Oh, look, they're laughing, they're laughing! Don't you also want to laugh? Ha 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 ha! Oh, everything's so positive and upbeat here! Ha 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 ha! Nothing bad, no reality, nothing mean at all! Oh, it's okay! We're just gonna laugh here! It's gonna be so cute! Ha 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 ha! Because we respect you. We respect you as smart, intelligent adults. You do something different to your hair, it looks nice. We respect you. We're the good chick flick. So Streep starts to get emotional after seeing her three baby daddies and her friends try to cheer her up by lazy chick flick check number five, dress up clothes. Again, kind of assuming what amuses three-year-old girls will also amuse grown-ass women. Why the fuck do they have feather boas in a hotel anyway? Um, maybe I missed something, but what does being a dancing queen have to do with the Greek hotel version of Montel Williams? Hey, all your boyfriends are back and you might be ruining your daughter's wedding, but... At least you can swing those hips? Uh, eh? Oh, almost forgot lazy chick flick check number six! Using inanimate objects as microphones. Now, it does usually say it has to be a stirring spoon or whisk, but the odor will work too. We'll give it a pass. Never mind me, I'm just a man with a piano on a boat, just waiting to open up an episode of Monty Python's Flying Circus. Boy, I can only imagine the thousands of dollars that went into the amazing choreography they put in this film. I think they literally modeled it after all the suburban mothers dancing in their kitchens to ABBA music. You know I love these moves, it makes me feel like a Spice Girl! They're they're still a thing, right? Yay, we jumped in water! That's deserving of a high five! So we see Sophie interacting with her fathers while, of course, not singing a song about it at all, but rather singing a song about stuff that happened in the past that connects very little to what's going on now. But fuck it, at least there is some character development here among our leads. They hang out together, they talk, we don't hear what they're talking about, but at least they're together, they're doing something for exactly three minutes. Yeah, because we have much more important things to get to, like another song that has nothing to do with anything. This one's sung by Sophie's fiance. Oh yeah, there's a wedding in this movie. And a fiance that we barely see, who apparently likes to almost burn his future wife's head off. What the hell am I watching right now? I could be wrong, but I think we look fucking ridiculous. You know, I'm not a wedding expert or anything, but I'm just gonna take a wild guess that the day before a wedding, people aren't quite so carefree and happy-go-lucky. 
I think it's usually more my mom's causing drama, none of the dresses fit, and my uncle's threatening to punch anybody who takes his flask away. But if you think this is what the day before a wedding looks like, I want what you're puffing. And I'm not kidding. They literally go from one song having nothing to do with anything immediately into the introduction of the next song that has nothing to do with anything. No, really, it's kind of amazing how much they don't want any character in this movie. Watch. <laughs> even a break. No discussing anything, no time to catch your breath, they just go right fucking into it. By God, have we learned anything about these characters? I mean, what do we really know about Sophie? Nothing. What do we really know about her fiance we never see? Nothing. The three dads? That's a joke. All we know about them is that one likes everything in its place, one's more goofy and outgoing, and the other is suave and cool. Those are the fathers from Full House! You're so desperate you're doing stereotypes of TGIF stereotypes? Oh, fuck it. Just let me know when Robo Urkel comes in. Oh, wait, that'd be too threatening. Don't worry, ladies. Nothing funny, nothing funny at all. We're the good chick flick. The only one who seems to be a little developed is Streep's character. But even she has to take a back seat to ABBA songs that obviously aren't there to tell a story, but just be ABBA songs. This is the worst thing to happen to Greece since Alexander the Great died. So the fathers are given presumably death by Snoo Snoo as Sophie goes to, imagine, actually have a meaningful conversation with one of them. Look out! Humanity! What you drew on the boat, this is good. This is really good. Why don't you pursue this? You have a real talent here. Um, not to be cruel or anything, but I think that's just okay at best. I mean, I don't want to knock anyone's artistic sensibilities or anything, but do you really think that's leave this place material? I mean, who knows? Maybe there's a market out there for people who like your cocktail napkin drawings of Archer. The art world is vast, anything can happen. Eventually, all three dads, separately of course, learn the truth about Sophie being their daughter and all pledge to be there for her. This, big surprise, is a little much for Sophie to take in. What a shock! And here I thought inviting my three unknown dads I never met to meet up the weekend of my wedding without telling anybody dealing with other common wedding drama would cause no problems whatsoever! Oh, I only hope there's an ABBA song in this movie about being a fucking mental masochist! But nope, instead we're cutting to stupid shit like this. Man, even by bad chick flick standards, that was uncomfortably forced. <laughs> I refuse to shrug under protest that we are better as a species. But Brosnan tries to see if he can make things better. It used to be so nice. It oh, wow. I, so I, I, oh, wow. Yeah. Where um, are those happy days? They seem so hard to find. His singing's so bad, even Streep doesn't know how to I take it in. You, but you have closed your mind. So when you need oh, yes, thank God. Drown me out, music. More background singers. Auto tuning can only save me so much. When you're gone, though I try, I can I carry on? Jesus, was ADR at a karaoke pub after 20 Guinnesses? You're making Gerard Butler sound like Adina Menzel! When you're gone, when you're gone, ah. I try, how can I get on? Okay, movie, don't make me do that again. Oh okay, good, we're back to Sophie. Maybe now we can finally get into her mindset and see what the hell's Let's going through her. Let's pick up where we left off last night. What the fuck is this? Tanya can't ignore the chemistry between us. You're so hot! Teasing me. No, I, seriously, where the hell is this coming from? This is literally the first time we've seen this guy and he's not even hitting on a main character. Why are we focusing on this? There's that look in your eyes. What the hell does this have to do with anything? Tell me what's happening! <laughs> Okay, I know jukebox musicals have to incorporate their story to songs that already exist, but this isn't incorporating them, this is writing around them. This is dropping a roadblock of creativity to your nads. I mean, it's not like... Don't make me say it. Don't make me say it, movie. God damn it, don't make me say it. I, I, I can't, I, I can't fucking say it. Please, don't make me say this. <sighs> It's not like Moulin Rouge where the song's actually tied in. 
Yeah, that's how bad we've gotten, people. You're forcing me to compliment Moulin Rouge. I feel so dirty. But it is true. They at least tried to tie in the songs to the story they were telling. This? This is tying it in as much as, say, a Six Flags musical stage show for your five-year-olds. It doesn't have to make sense. It just has to be happy and mindless while you catch your breath from the real entertainment. Only here, this is the real entertainment! God, it's like being the designated driver at Satan's bachelorette party. Which, I'm not really sure if Satan's female or not, but after seeing this film, I'm willing to lean towards he probably is. We done good. Oh, holy sh**. You make me want to pee myself. That was terrible. So Sophie meets up with her fiancé and lets him know what she's done. I thought that I would know my dad right away, but I didn't. I, I just, I have no idea. You invited these guys and you didn't tell me. No, I thought you would try to stop me. I thought you used logic and stuff that doesn't usually fly in a bad chick flick. He rightfully calls her a twat and she goes to her mother to figure out what to do. Will you help me? <laughs> I want to sing a song about my emotions. I was thinking about the Monster Mash. It ties in about as much as any of the other songs do. In all fairness, we do surprisingly get a song that does kind of connect to what's going on as Streep sings about letting her daughter go. It's actually one of the few genuinely emotional moments in the entire film. Thank God they botch it up just a few moments later. No self-confidence, but you see the winner takes it all. Okay, by this point Streep's been at least passable in the singing department. Nothing great, nothing terrible, but what the heck, you kind of give her a pass. But here, you really have to stretch your vocal chops in order to make it sound good, and... It's simple and it's plain. God bless her, she looks nice against that background. Yeah, she may have given Bronson a look before, but now it's clearly his turn. Spectators at the show. Uh, ooh, yeah, I, uh, um, hmm... Let's do each other a favor and both fire our agents. Stella! Find us better voice teachers! So the wedding finally gets underway as she's about to marry Saturday Night Fever here, but big shock, Streep wants to steal the spotlight. Partaking in yet another lazy chick flick cliche, interrupting a wedding. I have to tell you, he is here. I know, I invited him. We can find out if you want, but... Being a third of your dad is great by me. Uh, me too. I'll take a third. So, Meryl is shocked to find that in a bizarre way she's reliving Sophie's choice as we discover that... Oh, I can't even say it. Just watch. I have no clue which one of you is my dad, but I don't mind. Sky, let's just not get married yet. <laughs> let's just get off this island and just see the world, okay? All right. I love you. <laughs> to everyone who spent a fortune coming out here, my fiance's parents who spent a fortune on this wedding, and my mother who spent the other half of the fortune on this wedding, I offer you my sincerest fuck yous in the ass. Have a nice trip back. But it's okay, because we partake in lazy chick flick check number who the fuck's even counting anymore. Unrealistic happy ending that would be a positively terrible ending in real life. But wait, it gets better. Why waste a good wedding? <gasps> oh God, just end it. it! I now pronounce you man and wife. Even though by religious standards, you've broken God knows how many qualifications for a Catholic marriage. So enjoy these words that mean absolutely nothing. They have their reception and we finally wrap up on our mo- If you change your mind. Well, what is this? If you're all alone, with a pretty Movie, you're over. Shut the fuck up. No, there is literally nothing else to sing about. You've already had one pointless song dedicated to a side character, and a moron the audience is gonna stab their ears out with sharpened platform shoes. We can go dancing. We can go walking. Okay, can someone just give me something really manly here for a second? Swallow this. Thank you! 
So Sophie's not getting married, but is happy to know she's now getting triple the presents on her birthday. And that finally seems to wrap up our mo- Oh Christ! This movie has more endings than Return of the King! No, I see the credits rolling, that means I can stop. Good, I don't want to see any more of my three ants partaking in drunken karaoke. And you know what? Neither should you! Even if you're an ABBA fan, this movie is just awful. I've never seen a more pointless reason to use a band's songs. It doesn't further any story, fuel any emotion, or make us understand anything about any of the characters. I don't see how this product could have been saved. In a way, I'm glad the director went on to stronger work because I don't know how anybody could have pulled this film off in a good way. There are good chick flicks out there, ones that are smart, funny, dramatic, even groundbreaking. This is the nightmare that everybody thinks a chick flick is. And all I gotta say is thank God better films are coming out with more intelligence and thought. Because this is pure shit. But I'll give the movie this, it did make me want to go to Greece. And apologize to everybody there for this film being made. Hey, speaking of moving, where did everybody go anyway? Hey guys, what you working on? Oh, well, since no one's gonna see this review, we decided to write down all the things that would normally ruin our careers. Oh my god, do you mean any of that? Oh, no, we just say it because we won't get in trouble for it. Yeah, go ahead, say something terrible to everyone. Uh, but I can't do that, I'd be nothing without these people. Oh, come on, you pussy, nobody's watching anyway. It's like screaming into a pillow. You think so? Yeah. Oh yeah, you'll feel much better letting out your aggression on nobody. Okay, so you want me to point to all the viewers at home? The, the ones that allow me to make a living doing what I love. Oh, yeah. You want me to point to all of them and just say the most terrible, horrible thing I can think of, like, you're all... I guess Mamma Mia had a bigger fan base than I thought. <laughs>